Welcome to A Growing Concern. One thing I've been concerned about for a long time is the state of banking, the state of the, uh, the poverty in this country, and it was all came really loud upon the scene last year thanks to the folks in Wall Street that uh, kind of brought things to the fore where we realized at least it made national news that the, there's a 1% that own most of this country and there's a 0.01% that own most of that. And the rest of us 99 cent percenters are, are struggling around with the economy going down for us while uh, multinational corporations and, and, the, and the wealthy in this country keep getting more wealth all the time. And from what I've been hearing on TV, they're holding on to that wealth. They're not letting it go. They're not creating jobs with it. Perhaps they want to make part of that reason is they want to make Obama a one-term president. That's some of the shenanigans that has been going on because they want to get their, their golden boy in there this year around. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about austerity and, and at the show tonight, and we're going to mention a, a couple, three uh, uh, different uh, events that are going to be going on in the near future. And, uh, and to help me with that is we're going to have Greg Margulis with me here. Greg is with the Jobs with Justice, and he has a few other hats too as well, and we'll probably talk about that as we go through the program. We're going to discuss back and forth a lot of the issues here, and a little later on the program, if the phone calls kind of peter out or whatever, and we have a little bit of time, I'll play a little video that I shot last night, a woman named Ellen Brown who came to town to talk about the importance of a public banking system rather than the banking system we have now where the majority of our, our uh, debt is, is to pay off the interest that we've been borrowing for, for our wars and for all the different things that are going on uh, that is not really covered on the corporate news at all. Big surprise, huh? But anyway, for now, welcome to the program, Greg. Thank you, Jim. Good to see you as always. All right. Greg contacted me during the, uh, the uh, Occupy Portland, not uh, Afghanistan rally, you know, a couple, three weeks ago, a month ago, whenever that was, and, and, and told me about this event coming up. And uh, it's, it's a really good event, but it's also a good, you know, uh, leaping off point for some of the issues that, that are facing this country. Uh, banksters being probably about the main one. And there's, there's the bank transfer day coming up on the, uh, the 5th of next month where they're encouraging Occupy Portland. And nationwide, people are saying to move your money that day. And, we'll, you know, we're going to touch on that just briefly. But anyway, what is this austerity I mean, I hear this used in reference to Europe a lot, but I don't hear it used here. Yeah, well, we're using it more, I think, so that people will become familiar with it because it's kind of the international expression. We're all in the same boat. Right? We're all in the same yeah. boat, and, yeah. and it's the same model. It's the same thing being used, basically, to steal more money from working class people and, and the working poor uh, by cutting services, by cutting jobs, by outsourcing jobs. Uh, and it's all based on this false premise of debt and deficit. Uh, you know, and even the Democrats are buying into this uh, when in fact, to the extent that there is debt and deficit, it's been caused by the malfeasance of the big banks and big corporations and this kind of plutocracy that has been created in this country. And the, the way to pay back the debt and deficit is for those huge corporations which instead of paying back for what they've done are making more and more profit. Uh, it's, it's just such a kind of a ridiculous uh, reality that, uh, that, uh, that we're facing when the, you know, the, the foxes are in the hen house and mm -hmm. they're just uh, doing whatever they want. So uh, basically the idea is in, in Europe and in Greece especially there have been tens if not hundreds of thousands of people in the street uh, Day uh, after day. Yeah, <laughs> demonstrating against this idea of austerity, that we have to cut back on our public services, uh, cut back on the things that serve people rather than profit. Uh, and actually, in terms of pure economic, uh, in a pure ec purely economic sense, uh, the idea of cutting services and public programs and jobs when you're in a recession when you have this kind of a problem is totally backwards to what economists say you should be doing. You should be borrowing more if you need to. You should be investing in jobs, in services, in growing the economy by putting people to work and building up from there because then you have consumer bases, you have tax bases, you have the things that we need, whereas uh, actually cutting these things is throwing fuel on the fire of the recession. Mm -hmm. And but it's But it's also forcing 
union workers who get decent contracts, decent benefits, decent wages, family wages, uh, uh, out and privatizing things like the post office. There's a big effort to privatize the post office and they're using false premises again to say that the post office has to be cut severely and waiting in the wings are private corporations mm -hmm. ready to take over and not pay their workers nearly as well, not give them the kind of benefits that they need, health care, those kind of things. And it's just a slippery slope. And, uh, and they also have their, their uh, organizations like the American Legislative Exchange Alec. Commission or whatever yeah. that, that works on a state level to pass, to pass these uh, austerity measures and, uh, and, and related uh, legislation to, to make things more difficult. It's, it feels like a conspiracy, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, the, theorist per se, but uh, I'll tell you the way things are going, that, uh, that, that seems to be uh, intentional and for that, uh, for that end game. So, you know, here in Portland, uh, we're seeing this happening on a very uh, grassroots level. You know, more and more foreclosures, more and more people who are homeless or houseless, um, and there's all kinds of uh, uh, activism and, and organizing and, uh, and uh, organizations being built around these issues, and it's very exciting. Now, the, the big event on November 3rd, the anti-austerity event, which I think you'll put up on the screen at some point, that, yeah, right. uh, is, again, it's on Saturday, November 3rd, so it's a week from tomorrow, uh, at 1 o'clock at Holiday Park. That's just south of, uh, of uh, it's Lloyd, Center Lloyd Center on Multnomah, I That's believe. right. Yeah. Lloyd Center around 11th, I think. Something like uh, that. Right, and right in there. Yeah, it's right there, uh, right where the uh, Max train goes right by. That's right. Easy to get to yeah. and uh, easy access. So there's going to be a rally at 1 o'clock and then a march at 2 o'clock. And there are a number of affinity groups, groups from different organizations with different issues that are going to be doing actions around this whole issue of austerity. And then we're going to all be together in a march um, and just demonstrating the way they're demonstrating in Europe to say we've got to put a stop to our elected representatives doing this to the, the people, putting profits over people. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's going to be an exciting and uh, hopefully very effective event. And we invite everyone from Portland to come out and uh, join. Especially with the march. But, uh, you know, what you, what you were mentioning about austerity st struck a bell with me because I thought to thinking, well, you know, the, the, uh, a lot of times, you know, like Sherman's March to the Sea, you know, you, you, uh, the war of attrition where you, you make sure that the, the other side, you know, you, you make sure that a lot of them, there's a lot of wounded. So they, they have to deal with the wounded. You make you know you burn their crops or whatever. It 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 makes it so they they have a hard time continuing their life as it is. And then with and the same things going on here with yeah. austerity. I mean yeah. the, the folks you know the, the middle class is being drained away and, and they're more worried about if they're going to have a job and then they then they are able to to uh, educate themselves. And they, as long as they are in that stress level, it's easier to keep them on that stress level and and again keep dragging them down further. And mm -hmm. the austerity seems to be working that way. And, and Greece, and what is the other one? Spain, is it? Spain, yeah, I think it's affecting all of the European uh, countries. And uh, those are dragging the rest extent. of them down. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, you know, the, the economy there uh, depends, the countries depend on one another with the common, the common uh, euro. monetary, the euro. Yeah, and, well, yeah. that was a good idea as long as it works. Right, right. <laughs> But it, it hasn't been working. Yeah. So what you're saying is on the third, then, there's going to be various different actions. So we're, we're going to believe maybe some playing a hot angle seek with the Portland police sounds like a little bit because they're going to yeah. have to be out there trying to keep their thumbs on all that. Uh, it's always interesting to see how the police react to these kinds of demonstrations. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a offshoot of Occupy. It's, it's being organized by a group called the Portland Action Lab, which is not specifically Occupy, but it's connected. Um, and it's just folks, you know, folks from various organizations who are saying we are in deep, uh, dire uh, place and we need to organize to change things or we're going to continue to get kicked to the street. And we're seeing it every day. We're seeing people lose their jobs, lose their homes. Um, jobs overseas. Hungry, yeah, jobs overseas. There's just, the system is, is is not working for for the people, and we have mm. to. The only way to get it historically, the only way to get that to change is to 
organize <laughs> and demonstrate and demand right. it. Well, they say the system isn't working, but it's it's coming. It's becoming increasingly clear that it is working. <coughs> how it is designed to work? Exactly. But it right. isn't. It isn't no longer a, a design for the people of the people and by the people. Right. You know, I won't say it's of and for by the corporations because that is just a vehicle that the wealthy are using to to enhance their position and to and to keep everybody else down. Well, and the fact uh, with Citizens United that it's been co codified in, in our. In mm -hmm. our Constitution, as that that corporations are people shows the the length that uh, that the model the this corporate model goes to 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 gain more and more power, and uh, there's only one way to change it, and that's to get out and demand the change. And that should let people, you know, not that I'm making a plea for Obama by any means here, but that should let people know that uh, that five to four decision. Uh, did what it did for Citizens United, but you know, if if we get another Republican in there and we got three three uh, what do you call it? Supreme Court justices that are in their seventies, and the uh, if, if we if, if any of those uh, you know move on and another, especially if the one that moves on is 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 an, on the progressive side is on the on the on the upper side of Roe versus Wade, we're going to have some serious changes in our culture like we just did with our economics right and uh you know i'm not making a plea for for uh for obama but people ought to realize some of the dynamics that are involved and you'll hear that right on on the on the corporate news as well but uh the the decisions that are made on all the upper levels whether those upper levels are in corporate drawing rooms or on in the supreme court which in some ways they're getting to be the same uh affect us greatly just like these these uh, trade uh, packs that we've been making affect us greatly, and they have a lot right. to do with this austerity. I think that's right. Uh, there are so many things to talk about, and this I think this program <laughs> just take is a off little anywhere bit, you want. <laughs> if you if you mention it, and I know something about it, I'll I'll talk about it. That you mentioned trade. Please right do right now. <coughs> and pardon me, I've got a bit of a cough. I'll try to keep it to a minimum. Um, right now, there's a new trade deal called the Trans-Pacific Partnership which involves like 12 countries in Southeast Asia, the United States and Canada right, but and Mexico. It's basically an expansion of NAFTA. Right. Other ones and, may join in later. And others can join in. It has yeah. a docking, uh, a docking uh, a part of it where other, after it's been done, others can join without having any participation in creating the, the rules of, of the trade agreement. And the other thing about it is it's being done in, in uh, closed, behind closed doors even our own representatives, you know, Ron Wyden is the Can't chair. Of, the he's the chair of the subcommittee on trade in this country, and he cannot participate in the negotiations. And he, they only recently allowed him to go in and look. He can't make copies. He can't do anything. I mean, this is being done basically. You know, when we talk about corporations taking over, there are over I think 600 corporations that are involved in these negotiations for these trade deals. That, Worldwide, that yeah. basically yeah. are serving to exploit uh, workers in in other countries by where there aren't unions and there aren't high wages and good benefits, and to to outsource jobs here, and basically uh, from these trade deals, our trade deficit has grown. It hasn't been reduced, so it's not serving the per, the needs of workers here, and it's exploiting workers in other countries. So that's a big umbrella issue, the issue of trade. That's the big plutocratic uh, machine mm -hmm. that, that is affecting, comes back and affects all of us. Well, we can see how it affects us. We're talking about, you know, the, the austerity programs, but we can see how these trade uh, deals, uh, well, NAFTA, how it affected 1.2 million farmers in Mexico. That's right. You know, it, 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 they lost their farms, they moved to the cities, a lot of them maybe came up here. And uh, these trade deals are one of the, I think, one of the ramrods that are that are creating the conditions that make austerity necessary. Although right. it isn't necessary, but right. that's how it's being. But sold. they use it as an excuse. I mm -hmm. mean, basically, that's it. But we're going to continue demonstrating that all who wander are not lost, and we're going to wander all over the map here about what's going <laughs> on in Portland and uh, and some of the some of the issues, and try to tie all these together. But these issues, we were talking about how these issues are all interrelated. You know, and they're all part of a, I think you said it very well, the system is working and it's working 
uh, in the way intended, capitalism intended uh, to enrich and, uh, you know, the, the richest and the, and the R most powerful. Make them more secure um, and more stable. And, 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 you know, I mean, there can be arguments about capitalism and uh, as an economic system, but certainly unregulated capitalism, the way it's evolved in this country, has created this uh, corporate state, basically, a corporate-run uh, economy and uh, you know the, the the majority of people are suffering from it. And well, it became obvious that uh, capitalism wasn't working when it, as it was supposed to, when when the uh, banks failed and the and the uh, General Motors failed, and rather than you know going under survival of the fittest, they were bailed out. I'm not saying right. they should or they shouldn't have, right. but that just demonstrates that the system was not working right. It was out of whack. Well, if you won't say they should or they shouldn't have, I'll say they shouldn't have. <laughs> or if they are going to be, if you're going to try to maintain this kind of system, you don't do it on the backs of the majority of people. You don't do it on the backs of working class people, low income people, people who are the, who, who are the most needy, families and the, the people mm -hmm. who are our communities. You know, when you have the, the, the disparity in wealth that's been created over the last 40 years, that... Uh, is a, a flag, a red flag about why this system is working uh, for the one tenth of one percent and and against the majority of people. I don't like to say the ninety nine percent because there are people all in between. But uh, there's one statistic that always uh, brings it home: uh, the top four hundred uh, people in this country, top four hundred uh, income in this country, mm -hmm. wealth. Uh, is equivalent to 150 million Americans. It's a little under half of the 400 country. to 150 million. There's something wrong when a mm -hmm. system uh, has that kind of inequity. And then that money isn't used to, to f uh, uh, help our in uh, fix our infrastructure, to build. You know, we desperately need uh, a, uh, a non-fossil fuel energy system. And it would be a perfect way to get out of this recession and build jobs. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, we don't c talk about climate. You probably do on your show a bit, but there's no talk Not about enough. climate change. There wasn't one question about climate change First time in the ever. presidential debates. Yeah. And yet we're seeing all over the world the effects of it. And uh, we have an opportunity to build a, a clean energy infrastructure, to do energy efficiency uh, programs like retrofitting houses to be more energy efficient to do uh, solar panels to expand instead of contract uh, public transportation, make it more efficient for people, more affordable to people. That's another way that austerity is attacking people. Uh, people who rely on public transportation can relate to this. The, the, uh, the cost is going up and the service is going being down. Cut. Mm -hmm. and, and for people who have to get to a job, you know, if it takes you two hours, to get there in two hours back, you're not working an eight-hour day. You're working a 12-hour day right. and getting paid for an eight-hour day. And, and your family life suffers. Yeah, your kids and, suffer. Yeah. I mean, it, it expands. And these are the kind of things. There's a, a group called Opal that it works on the issue of, of, uh, uh, of transportation, transportation equity. Yeah. And, Here in Portland. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and there's, you know, there's the issue of homelessness or... Houselessness and that distinction between homelessness and houselessness is you can have a home by having community. A house is a structure. Mm -hmm. So if you're houseless, you don't have a structure that's protecting you from the weather and keeping you warm and providing mm -hmm. you with the uh, utilities and that sort of thing. And security. But yeah. uh, there are a lot of houseless people and there are many who are both houseless and homeless because they don't have that community mm -hmm. because we have a system that doesn't provide for the needs of those people. and. Right to Survive and Right to Dream 2, both organizations, they're kind of connected at the HIP organizations, are working on those issues. And that's something we can talk about a little bit if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's move into that because I have a little clip from the, uh, from the rally in March, the Occupy Portland, not Afghanistan rally the other day. And there was a, a stop at the, at the city hall and there was a little four minute talk about that. And, and, and uh, uh, I don't know, Portland may be better than some cities regarding the homeless. I understand there's people that are homeless from other parts of the country that come here. But uh, still, it, it's I forget how many thousands there's homeless every night. Yeah, I you think you might have that figure. I, I don't it's know. It's roughly 1,500 who are overflow to the available beds, and 
you know, temporary shelter. Fifteen hundred 1, more than, than the more than they can than than the city can take care of through the various uh, churches and and uh, things downtown. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's fifteen hundred more than that that they can count. There's got to be right. homeless people out there they don't right. know about. That's Just like there's unemployment people, unemployed people that don't make the eight percent. Right. That's right. Oh, uh, unemployment is so much 16, higher. It's than, probably sixteen yeah, at least. Yeah, the the reality is so much different. But uh, as far as the, there are grassroots efforts to deal with this, and Right to Dream Two, which some folks may know about, uh, it makes is, the news again. Yeah, yeah, is uh, came out of Right to Survive, which. Uh, uh, Part of the, the, what they did was Dignity Village, which people may know about, which was kind of the first homeless encampment. But, excuse me, Right to Dream 2 was uh, uh, set up back when Occupy came in and, and, and occupied the parks. And it was done on a piece of property at 4th and Burnside, where the owner of that property, for code reasons and problems with the city, wasn't able to do what he wanted to do with this, this lot. Uh, so it's just a vacant lot. To yeah. vacant lot. So he gave it or leased it for a dollar a year or what have you to uh, Right to Dream 2 who made it into, it's not, a, uh, it's not a permanent encampment per se, it's a rest area. In other words, it's an area where people can come and get a good night's sleep. Because one thing about if you're homeless or houseless or out under a bridge or whatever, it's very hard to, to get sleep because you can be attacked. It's cold. The you know there's all kinds of things that uh, keep you from getting the rest you need. And and without being rested, you're going to have all kinds of mental problems. And you're going to certainly not going to be able to get yourself together to get a job or to do the kind of things to to climb out of that situation. Do they provide ways that people can get clean there too. Is right. Because that, that's another right. issue. Yes. There's there's porta potties there and there's. Uh, 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 facilities for cleaning and that sort of thing. So this rest area takes care of, I think, about 60 people a night. And so it's different people every night? Well, there are some people who are relatively permanent, but they've had successes where people have stayed there, gotten their act together, had the kind of rest and security that they need, and then gone out and gotten a job or gotten housing or, or been, uh, and plus, they've, they've taken responsibility for security around it, for cleanliness, for food for people. It's, it's a great model. And so what is the city doing? The city is fining them for being there uh, for some, a code violation that they are a, a, a recreational campground. They're, they're saying they're recreational when they know they're not recreational. And they're using that as an excuse to find them to try to get out of there. Because what the city cares about is what things look like. They want, they say, go get out of sight and then, you know, and then we'll leave you alone. But if you're going to be in somewhere like downtown where you're visible, then uh, we don't want that. So we're going to use the codes mm -hmm. against you. We're going to use the laws against you. And it's really, uh, it's angered me uh, incredibly. And I think a lot of people in Portland are seeing it. And uh, these folks who are down there are really great people. And they've done an incredible self-organizing job, a grassroots self-organizing job. Uh, I think you know Ibrahim. Ibrahim, he's on a program Uber. many years ago. Yeah, and yeah. He's, he's, he's been a great leader for that and lots of other people, uh, very, like I say, very grassroots. Uh, so that kind of thing is going on in Portland. Uh, we're talking about foreclosures. Uh, uh, Alicia Jackson, who was a woman who was uh, kind of self-evicted from her house because she w lost her job and she couldn't pay for this inflated uh, interest on her mortgage and predatory loan type things. And so then she found out the community would back her. She On May Day, she moved back into her house and she's been there ever since. And now the city again, not the banks, not the owner of the property or the supposed owner of the property, but the city is trying to get her out because they won't turn the water on and they say without the water on, it's a health hazard. It's a health hazard. So right. there, it's like a catch-22, mm -hmm. which the city could solve, but they, their intention is not to help people, you know, mm -hmm. survive and, and, and prosper. Well, it's, well, it, people can bring water in. Well, and they do have water brought in, but they, mm -hmm. They use technical issues about the traps not having water and things like that, mm -hmm. and it's it's an excuse basically to say 
you know, to, to serve the interests of the banks and the mortgage companies. That's what right. it is. Right. So this might be a good time to cut away to that little four-minute four clip. I forget. I never did get the fellow's name that gave that talk in front of the, uh, in front of the uh, city hall on the march. The, the march came down the street, and we stopped, and he gave a little talk there. It's about a four-minute clip, I believe, and, and if we can do that, we'll go into that now, and uh, we'll come back and open up the phone soon. points to a disregard for human rights and directly relates to an irrational set of priorities that are being dictated. Since last December, this prayer vigil has been maintained by a dedicated crew, some of whom are here with us now. Oh, no! This team has endured winter, Police harassment yes. yeah. and poisons yeah. that can become the only thing preventing despair. Poisons that persist as we as we fight yet another failed war, the drug war. All of this lies at the doors of those responsible, and this time we won't just go away. There is nowhere left to go to. They are taking it all. They are stealing it all. Yeah. Fuck austerity! The Portland Police Bureau was recently slammed for its systematic failure to treat people with respect. That pattern showed itself in those parks last fall, in Shemansky Park last winter, and it continues to show itself right here every day. To try to shift the blame on a, onto a broken mental health system is a supreme irony. Oh, as the city council's callous refusal to allow people to simply sleep, combined with the day-to-day -day behavior of the police toward people who try to sleep on the streets, are contributors to mental health crisis in the first place. Yeah, is a self-fulfilling situation. One need only consider what it is like to get a single bad night's sleep to begin to grasp the reality of this torturous city policy. It is not forgotten that this situation is due to the misuse of our wealth to enrich a few thieves and to murder many innocents. When the Occupy camps were cleared last fall, the poorest were once again removed from the political process. By being leaderless, Occupy creates an opportunity for the poor to lead in the battle for civil rights, their own as well as others. And to overlook the needs of the most poor is to start in the wrong place. Before I join you and we re-march, I want to leave you with one thing. A new study done by Fairness and Accuracy Reporting states that poverty barely registers as a campaign issue. Oh. Out of 10,489 Campaign stories over six months, 17 of them And overall, in the media, less than 1% of stories.
Live stream! But again, on behalf of the End the Camping Band Vigil, thank you for being here. Enjoy the rest of your march and solidarity. All right, we're back. Well, we just figured out we got to need another hour and a half. <laughs> so I don't know what we're going to do. There's a lot to talk about here. And uh, we've been uh, covering a lot of these different issues. Like I said, we're going to wander around a little bit. But we're not really because they're all connected to the fact that, that uh, the, 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 the company, the, I mean, the, the country is, is, is being set up, up for, of, and by the wealthy, not the middle class anymore, not the, and obviously not the poor people, and, and not the people that have mental disabilities or problems, and they end up, they end up with in, the, in the homeless shelters and places like that, and, and there's no assistance. Well, there is assistance being offered, but it's not enough. I, I forget the figures, but there's hundreds of thousands of empty homes in this country, more than there are homeless people. That's exactly I right. I forget what the exact figures are, yeah. but it's 20, 30 to 1 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And those empty homes are not helping the neighborhoods that they're in. No. They're bringing down property values. They're creating safety hazards. They're, you know, that, that isn't the intention of having houses in neighborhoods. Is not the intention is not to have them empty. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it has quite the... It's, it has quite the bad effect, and when you have that uh, combined with all the people who don't have places to live, it's just, it, it, it's insane. You know, we have an insane kind mm -hmm. of system. You had a bit of a Freudian slip. You said when the company, our country, so, you know, our, our country has kind of become a company, a company that, uh, uh, again, that serves profit, and I, you know, I'm kind of mm -hmm. reiterating what I said earlier, but it's, it's, it really is true, you know, we're not being served uh, the way we should be, and that's we have the, why we're doing. This. We have the perfect example of the of the, uh, of the conservative that's running for president. Is the exact epitome of that whole line of reasoning and that whole that whole way of being, and it's terrible. Yeah. But before we get to into the phones here, well, we got a little over twenty minutes. And when your name comes up, it says you know Portland Action Lab, which people can go to portlandactionlab.org. And uh, also they can go to uh, Solidarity Against Austerity if they want to talk and find out a little bit more about what we're talking about. But you also had Jobs with Justice up there. And yes. that's an organization that's national, but there's a, there's a very active Portland group here as well. Right, right. You might talk a little bit about what you guys do and, and, uh, and uh, maybe, maybe some of the top two things that you're working on. Sure. Uh, Jobs with Justice, Portland Jobs with Justice is a coalition of over 90 labor and community and faith organizations that is focused on uh, fair treatment of, of workers and on uh, issues of justice across the board in our communities. And the purpose of J with J, it's, it's kind of a solidarity building network. Um, so the whole idea is that we take seriously an injury to one is an injury to all. And that wasn't that, just rhetorical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and we do that by asking people to pledge not money, although that's needed always as well, but to pledge to go five times a year to somebody else's event, somebody else's struggle, to support it five times a year. That's, uh, are, these are these events that are particularly sanctioned by the, by the organization? Well, they, or they can just pick and choose? Well, they can pick and choose, but uh, Jay with Jay, because it's such a broad coalition, for instance, we've endorsed the N3 event, the austerity event. So going to that event, would be one of your five uh, per year of ev events. And of course, we don't expect people to keep count and say, yeah, I've done my five. But the whole idea is that, for instance, if, if Jay with Jay is helping a, an organization or a union with a, getting a, a, a new contract or dealing with some other uh, problem they have and come and uh, join them at rallies and at picket lines and that sort of thing, then the idea is that those union members, once they have their contract, once they have a successful result, that then they think about other organizations that are trying to get things, whether they be Right to Dream 2, trying to uh, mm -hmm. have their rest area uh, going without these fines, or Opal trying to get fair and equitable transportation, that when they have events, then those people who have been helped by other people come and we build capacity and we build numbers. So we also build solidarity among that, all the different that, issues, which is exactly right. And we connect the issues that way, which is what Portland Rising and the Economic Crisis uh, Committee of Jobs with Justice has been doing since the 2008 uh, crash. 
And uh, I think you know about some of the events we did. We had Malin Mitchell here, and we did a program with brought him, him on the show. Yeah, from Wisconsin. Th thanks to you. And sure. that was that was the first Portland Rising event. And we've done others. We crossed the uh, interstate bridge, and we had people in Portland and and Washington yeah, at the that same one. time. That was yeah. a great event. We've done these bus tours, where we put together several different uh, union and and community campaigns, and do in a half day or a day go to all these places with people uh, uh, raising up the issue and supporting the workers or the, the people involved in the issue. So Portland Rising is kind of uh, evolving now with uh, the new year coming, so we're working on that. And there is a, uh, I think you might uh, have, I think you can put up. There. We have one other event graphic. Yeah, you can th put this, that up, this event is called New Strategies in Movement Building. And it's happening this Monday, the 29th at 7 p.m. It's uh, two uh, labor and community leaders from uh, um, from Toronto are uh, coming into town and are going to talk about the Toronto Workers Assembly, which uh, is a really interesting work that was done in Toronto. And I think uh, th there was uh, some coverage of some of the uh, the big rallies and things that were happening up there. So it's going to be a discussion about different ways to look at the mm. process of building a movement and, and making change. What so, works and what doesn't. Yeah. Uh -huh. So again, it's Monday, uh, the 29th, 7 p.m. at the Musicians Hall, which is uh, 325 Northeast 20th Avenue. Just between and Sandy and, and Burnside there on, on 20th. Yeah, and it's a free event and uh, encourage people to come. and participate. Um, it's always good to be, you know, we, there's a lot of issues, uh, events like that in Portland where people who have had uh, struggles or whatever in other parts of the country and the world will come. And uh, to me, it's always good to hear other people's experience, Absolutely. you know, on issues similar, if not identical to the ones that are going on yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, their struggle, what was their struggle up in Toronto? Was that a citywide thing, or um, I, I think uh, it was the same kind of austerity and the, those same kinds of economic problems that happened. I, uh, to be honest, haven't studied up on that. I only I have limited capacity. Well, you got the 29th. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I've got the date, uh, but but I know that there's a, was a lot of interesting organizing, and I'll be I'll look forward to learning about more mm -hmm. about it when it happens, because uh, there's so much going on here. Just keeping that all together. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to jump back real quickly to the foreclosure issue because if uh, some folks who are watching this may know about uh, Alicia Jackson and that now the city has issued uh, a threat to evict her and when they issued that threat over a hundred people showed up at her doorstep the other morning uh, and there was a press conference and some people may have seen it on the news but there are people in the community who are actually going to step up and stand between the evictors and uh, you know the the people who are trying to stay in their homes and and make a community show of support. Is that going to be and, like the constables going to be evicting her or is it the sheriff? I think do, sheriff. ultimately does the eviction, and this has been done in other parts of the country and it's been done in other times in our history. Uh, and there's a time when uh, when things get to the point where you have to kind of put yourself out there and say, no, we're not going to put up with it anymore. We've tried through the legal channels to do this, and, and uh, you know, we're still getting this, uh, this response, and so we're going to stand up with our neighbors and our community members, mm -hmm. so that's exciting. Do you know any of the background of that? Because I know a lot of these homes, they were packaged and repackaged, and a lot of these places, these homes, they, uh, they cannot really establish who owns it anymore. Yeah, and do they have in a bank that owns this or yeah, anything like that? Yeah, this one has it. It has some of the complications, and uh, the the company that owns it does buy them in packages, and there's probably problems with the paperwork. But the issue is more that because of the economic crisis, people who are working and able to pay their mortgages uh, are not able to, and and that not through their own fault. In other words, they. They're victims of a crisis that was created by malfeasance in Wall Street, mm -hmm. which was deregulated by the politicians who were elected to protect us, not to 
give them uh, free reign to right. uh, exploit. A regulation and, that was yeah. put into place yeah. in the in the not too distant past because of things like this happening. Right. And then they just did away with that regulation. Right. right. And there again, we have a perfect example of who running for president is what he wants to do is more deregulation. Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. And, uh, and and the fact is that it's not; it's still against the interest of the uh, of the economy to allow this to happen because fewer people working means fewer businesses can survive, and mm -hmm. the tax base shrinks. It's just so backwards, um, and yet the greed is so rampant that uh, we, we have to get out in the streets, and, and that's what we're going to do on N3 on November 3rd, is get out in the streets and say no more to this and keep building capacity until we actually have power to make change. Mm -hmm. That's historically what happens with, uh, uh, you know, we were founded on revolution in this country, so small, we should remember that. <laughs> small steps adding <coughs> up, you know. And while we're talking about small steps, you know, was it a year ago? On November 5th, there was a bank transfer day, and I remember a friend of mine went into a bank, and uh, they had coffee and cookies, and the bank, I don't mean not a bank, but a community bank. They were going in there to open up an account, and they were going to close out their account in one of the major, major banks in the, in the, in the, in the, in the country. And uh, there were, so many people were doing it. Now, I don't know, it was, there was some uh, talk afterwards of how many people had changed banks. It was hundreds of thousands, I think, all over the country. And this is happening again this year on November 5th, Bank Transfer Day. And uh, hopefully we can get some coverage of it with the election coming on the next day. That well, might be an issue. But. I'll tell you, one of the wonderful things that came out of Occupy is for the last several months, a dedicated group, a guy named Tommy, who's kind of leading it, has gone every Friday to a different bank leafleting people and talking uh, uh, to them about moving their money from the big banks to the credit unions and, and to the local banks. Mm -hmm. um, and that whole idea, and plus the idea of the state bank, which is something that the Working Families Party, for instance, yeah, is working what, on, the legislator is working on, yeah. uh, that all evolved from the, um, the town hall, the economic crisis town hall that we had in uh, early 2009, which I think you it was probably in, was came in January, to. January, right? January of 2009, right after the crash, and that was where our J with J uh, economic crisis committee formed, and out of that came a lot of ideas, including the state bank and including move your money and that sort of thing that have evolved and been continuing, and and they're great, mm -hmm. uh, great steps to take for sure. That, that is really important, and there's so much that is going on behind the scenes, like I'm saying on the show all the time. You know, well, you, you see a little bit about a rally here, or, you know, or a corporate news will cover an event here, an event there, and they'll talk about it. But they don't give any idea of how many millions of people in this country are very dissatisfied with the way things are and belong to organizations that are trying to, trying to uh, write things over in, in, the, in the Mideast, like between the Palestinians and the, and the Israelis, or they're trying to, to save the environment. They're trying to stop the fracking, which, is just, which will be destroying a good part of this country in a period of time, or the tar sands, and all these different issues. There's millions upon millions of people that care about what's going on in this country. Right. And... Uh, uh, it's, it's being kept from reaching a uh, critical mass, I think, because the mass media it keeps it tamped down. Mm -hmm. I saw a good example the other night, a really good program in many ways by Sarid, Farid Zagaria. He was going into the whole energy thing, and he talked a little bit about the, the wind and a little bit about the, about the solar, and then he got into, into some other issues, and really a good part of it on conservation, how that's probably the most important thing. But then he started talking about shale, how that's going to get us completely off of of uh, of the uh, fossil fuels, and he says, "Well, but it has to be done right." right. Well, he, you know, he didn't really go into much detail about how much grief that is causing people. Yeah. So that was kind of glossing that thing over, yeah. and that's very off. That's very often what the corporate media will do. You yeah. know, they'll kind of cover it, but they don't really get into the issue as deeply as they need to be. They don't yeah. talk about how many people are involved in in setting things right. Right. You know, they'll might talk about few hundred thousand around the country that, that were in Occupy movement, but they didn't give any really firm, strong idea of how strong and how much longevity this movement has. Yeah. 
And uh, I think we got about eight, nine minutes left. We'll open up the phones. Uh, the first one's kind of bumpy often, but maybe we can get a couple people who want to make comments, ask some questions. Anything you might want to say, uh, you can contribute to the program, and we'll be glad to hear from you. So uh, we might mention one more time before, if, in case anybody does call, uh, November 3rd the, is, is the, uh, the rally. Uh, it's called Solidarity. Oh, I can't even read my own right. <laughs> <laughs> Solidarity Against, against austerity. austerity. And that is the name, that is the, <coughs> the, uh, the uh, website, Solidarity Against Austerity. And that's a particular issue event. But there is also portlandactionlab.org as well. So yeah. there, are, there are ways to find out more. Although we've covered it pretty well and we've kind of wandered around beyond what they might be talking about. But these, uh, these are both probably offshoots of Occupy Portland. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, there's been organizing in this town for uh, a long time that's part of... Well, right. That's as, something as we can expanded. get into. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. It, it just didn't arise with Occupy Portland that's by any right. means. That's we'll right. get the first caller on the air. First caller. Hello, first caller. I hate that silence. <laughs> first caller, you're on the air. Hopefully we'll get that up here. All right, well, he's working on that. So I was going to say, the uh, again, to repeat, the uh, N3, which is the short name for the anti-austerity uh, march and rally, is uh, at Holiday Park at 1 o'clock. I think we have the caller. Hey, caller, you're on the air. Nope, nothing going yet. Okay. Well, it starts at 1 o'clock at Holiday Park, right. but then it continues with a, a march. March, march at 2 o'clock. And yeah. that's going to go downtown, yeah. I imagine? Yeah. So well, no, it's, on the, it's going to be on the it's east side. It's all on the east side. It's going to stay on the east side. All yeah. right. <coughs> well, that's, that's good because uh, downtown has its, has its problems, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, with the traffic and all that. Hopefully this yeah. will, because I know I've had people call on the show and say, you know, I support what you guys are doing, but you're in my goddamn way to go home <laughs> at night. And, you yeah. know, well, that's a small price to pay for trying to make things, make people aware of what's going on. Absolutely. But uh, that's just something we have to deal with because, <laughs> because, uh, it's 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 painful to change. It's you know, and and it's a, call it call it a growing pain. You know, call it a, you know, when you want to change the way things are. Uh, certain things have to be have to be dealt with. There's and inconveniences. Inconveniences, yeah. and and it, it's inconvenient to, for the folks that are down there as well. And yeah. uh, so, hopefully that uh, this 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 holiday park will. It's a great little park, and it'll be yeah. a nice nice beginning of it. Yeah. So they're still working on that that phone call then, I guess. Uh, all right, well, still, we're getting out in six minutes. If they don't get on the stick, we're not going to be able to do it. And, uh, well, we just were talking about something. We said we'd get back to it. Remember oh, what that well, was? I, you know, when we were, uh, the video was on, I noticed we're both wearing the oh, same right. solidarity bracelet, which uh, is in solidarity with uh, workers, Colombian workers uh, who work for the General Motors plant in Colombia. Now, they GM, got kicked to the curb. they got kicked to the curb for having the audacity to have injuries and illnesses that were work-related, for instance, like carpal tunnel and like uh, uh, shoulder and back Re problems. Repetitive action. Repetitive yeah. action, yeah. lifting, and those kind of things. So rather than getting taken care of by the company, they were kicked to the curb and left without a job. So they've been, uh, they've been protesting this for over a year, and the head of their... Uh, group is here in Portland right now. Still here? Uh, yes, uh, Jorge Parra is his name, and he's a wonderful young man. He's 36 years old, and he walks with a cane. He's had two back surgeries, and you know the company won't take. And and we own a third of almost a third of General Motors because we bailed them out. And on so on our behalf, that company is exploiting workers in Colombia, and it's it's just another uh, another example of how this system works against working people. And uh, I, I hope people have a chance to meet uh, Jorge and hear his story. How long is he uh, going to be here? Well, he's waiting. Uh, he's hoping that there's going to be some movement towards resolving the conflict. And they're working on that in Detroit. There was just a uh, delegation, <coughs> excuse me, of faith leaders in Detroit. And the uh, auto workers union uh, are also trying to help negotiate a settlement mm -hmm. uh, for these workers, which are now down to 12 families. At one time, there were 80-some, but people just couldn't maintain the, the vigil, maintain the uh, thing. And there are hundreds who have suffered this, but most of them are too afraid or 
unable to really fight back. So this is a, a, a problem, and this is uh, emblematic of what happens all over the world mm -hmm. uh, in terms of workers being exploited, because th there's a higher profit margin the more you can exploit workers. And that's what this system is doing. It's how can we lower overhead and raise profits? And uh, it has nothing to do, do with ho human need. It just has to do with the almighty dollar. The almighty dollar. Yeah. Well, we're going to try that phone call again. First call Hello? on the air. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. I had a question for you about all of our elected officials. When they take office, they swear to, pr to protect the Constitution and follow it. And by that very definition, when you sign up for the WTO or NAFTA, you are signing away our sovereign rights, and they take precedent over our constitutional laws and our environmental laws. And I'll take your answer off the air. I think uh, it's against the law to start with, I believe. Thank well, you. That's a very good question. I wish we had more time. We could go into that quite quite at length. Uh, you got uh, about a little over a couple of minutes here to address I, I, that. I, I didn't hear quite all of that, but if if you're saying that these trade agreements uh, are illegal, uh, they're certainly immoral. They're certainly unethical. I think that uh, the idea of trade in the world we live in is a good idea, but it should be fair trade. It shouldn't be, you know, free trade sounds good. It sounds like it's free, freedom. But what it really means is it, it's free for corporations to exploit. It's free for capital. Uh, it's free for capital. Yeah. Uh, capital can go however they want to make profit, but human beings cannot. Human beings have restrictions, and uh, the trade issue is one that you've done programs on before. And we'll and, do more. And you can, uh, it does have a lot of parts to it, but it's uh, definitely... Uh, I think trade in and of itself is not illegal, but the way that they're doing NAFTA and the TPP you know, certainly should be. Well, it definitely, it, 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 the question is great because it demonstrates the uneven playing field that the, the money class, to call it you know, a, a more general term, has created in order to, like, you know, the, the interest we have to pay on, on the different things and, and, the, and, the, and the situation like the GM workers, all those are the slanting of the, of the uh, playing field, getting back to austerity, you know, that, that playing field is slanted. So what we have to do is we, we have to suffer in order to keep the system moving with, with the people, the capital and the money class have to stay in control and we can't take them down because they are responsible for what's going on. It gets right back to the early days of the unions when they, you know, they say that the, it, it is the, the factory owners that, that are doing it, but it's the factory workers that are providing the labor. Right. So it gets back to that same thing. Yep. So well, we're down to about a minute. We could go off in all, <laughs> a lot of directions here. Uh, I'd appreciate the call because... It may not be against the Constitution, but it's definitely against the sovereignty of our nation That's and right. in any other nation that signs that pact. That's right. So you got a sound bite for 15 seconds here? <laughs> put you, well, put just you I hope to see everybody on, uh, on the, the 3rd of November, Saturday, a week from Saturday at 1 o'clock at Holiday Park. And uh, there's lots of other activities. If people are interested in Jobs with Justice, I certain, certainly recommend going to the website. You can take the pledge to go five times a year for somebody else's struggle. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's never ending. There's lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's what just occurred to me, there's one thing that's probably more important than the sovereignty of our country, and that's the sovereignty of the people. And they should be the same thing, but it's obvious from what we'll be talking about tonight, they're not anymore. And we need to do something about that. So thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week.